Hey again, welcome back. Today's video is a review of Revlon's Age Defying Firming and Lifting Makeup. So this is a new foundation from Revlon that's come out towards the end of December, I think for 2014. It has a broad spectrum SPF of 15 and the major claims on this one are that it's supposed to firm, lift, hydrate, and cover. On Revlon's website, it says that this makeup has hyaluronic acid in it, which is supposed to help with easing expression lines, um, giving you a smoother, more tightened feel to your skin. And I guess they're saying that over time, it's gonna give you some of those benefits as well as off of initial application. It's also supposed to be a really moisturizing foundation. So I personally have normal to combination skin it has been leaning a little bit dry during pregnancy, but generally speaking, in the winter time, I'm fairly normal, and then by the spring and summer, as it warms up, I start to become more combination. And so I'm curious to see if this one's gonna work with my skin. I'm sure it'll perform better now that the months are cooler and there's less humidity outside. So this comes with 1.0 fluid ounces, which is standard amount for foundations. And I think it was about $14.99 at my local Ulta. So it's definitely a more expensive foundation, although you can always find them on sale, Ulta, and a lot of the local drugstores will do those buy one, get one, 50% off, some type of sale. So you don't have to necessarily pay full price for this. Now, it comes with a nice tight cap and a pump, which I always love seeing on foundations. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply this like I normally would. I have completely clean skin, I do have my normal moisturizer on, and a little bit of under eye concealer, but other than that I don't have anything else on my skin. And I'm just shaking up the foundation, I'm going to pump it on the back of my hand. So this is about how much I put on my hand, which is probably way more than I need. It, it was about two pumps. It's definitely a more liquidy foundation. Um, it's not super loose like the Revlon Nearly Naked but it is definitely a looser foundation. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and dab a few dots on my face. This one doesn't set very quickly, so I find that I can just go ahead and apply it around most of my face and then come back with a brush to blend in. So I'm just gonna take my Sigma Flat Top Kabuki brush. This is pretty much my standard foundation brush if I'm not using my hands. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend this in and it blends really easily it's it's a very smooth foundation I don't find that it's dragging or drying too quickly um, and you know now that I've blended it in the color I don't think seems as off at least not in this lighting as it did to me the first time I applied it on my skin so this is the foundation just on my cheeks chin and upper lip area my nose and forehead still don't have foundation and I think that, if you can tell, the color match is pretty good. It's maybe just the tiniest bit darker than my natural skin. At my Ulta, they did have 12 colors to pick from, and it looks like that's what they have on Revlon's website. Um, the range is not great. Once you start going towards darker skin tone, you're probably not going to find the best color options, which is always a little bit of a disappointment. So I'm just finishing up my nose and forehead. I definitely don't notice any sort of harsh scent to this. I don't even notice sunscreen to it. So this is how much I have left on my hands after applying the product to my face. And this was about two pumps. So I would say if you don't have a lot that you're covering up or you're just gonna do one layer, then you probably only need a pump, maybe a pump and a half. You can build this foundation up. I have um, done two coats, but for me two coats is a little bit too heavy. So I'm just gonna stick to one coat now. So now that I've finished applying the foundation to all of my face, I would say that this foundation has a satin or natural finish. I don't feel like it has a super dewy finish and I've looked at it outside in natural daylight and I don't feel like there's any area that looks super glowy. So even though it's claiming to be super moisturizing, um, I have to say that I do like this very natural finish to the skin. I think it did a great job of just covering the minor things that I had issues with. I think most of the redness around my nostril area is gone and the little blemishes I have are still peeking through a little bit but I feel like they have been toned down. So that's with one coat. I'm really happy with the way it feels on my skin. It feels super light. Um, like I said, I don't notice any harsh lines. I think the color matches pretty well to the rest of my skin 
And what I'm gonna do today is not set it with any powder. I have set it in the past with finishing powder because that's pretty much what I do with any foundation. But just to give it a fair shot and see how the foundation on its own really works. And then I'll come back at the end of the day to give you an update of how my skin's looking and my final impressions of this product. Okay, so it is the end of the day now and it is about 8.03 p.m. I've now been wearing this Revlon foundation for about nine hours and I have to say that my skin held up okay throughout the day at about the five or six hour mark. I definitely started to notice more shine or dewiness in this T-zone area. So I didn't set this with powder at the start of the day, if you remember, and I didn't go back in and touch up with any powder or any oil absorbing sheets. And I definitely noticed that I was shiny by the five to six hour mark. Now for me that's kind of a big deal because I tend to have pretty normal if not slightly dry skin in the winter months and so if I'm already seeing shine in my nose and forehead by the five to six hour mark then I can only imagine in the summer when it's more humid I would assume that I would probably be a lot more shiny and definitely need a setting powder with this foundation. And then my only other critique about it was that I felt like the coverage did start to fade a little bit by that five to six hour mark as well and it probably had to do with the fact that I was getting a little bit more shiny but I just started to notice some of my sunspots that I have above my lip and just a little bit of hyperpigmentation in my skin was peeking through and um, I can still see them now. The only thing that I will say I did was I shot this video about 15 minutes ago and took some oil absorbing sheets to show you the oil on my skin and then when I went to edit this video, I discovered that the whole thing was blurry. So I'm reshooting it and I feel like I'm probably not giving you the best sense of how dewy my skin was in this area, but just take my word for it. Um, there was definitely a little bit more oil on this area. I just would say that if you have anywhere from normal to oily skin, this foundation definitely needs a setting powder and it still may be a little bit too dewy for people with oily skin. Other than that, I didn't have any issues with it irritating my skin. I feel like it definitely kept my skin smooth all day. Um, one of the claims on it was that it firms and lifts your skin. And I can't say that I saw any major differences, but one thing that I do really like about the way this foundation wore throughout the day is I did not find it was sitting in any of my smile lines or any fine lines. So final impressions of this Revlon Age Defying Firming and Lifting Makeup. I would probably not repurchase this for me personally just because I feel like there are other foundations out there that wear a little bit better throughout the day for me um, and still have that nice satin natural finish that this one has. The other reason I wouldn't jump to go repurchase this is the price point. I feel like $14.99 is a little bit steep for what this foundation does. It does have nice packaging. I do like the pump. But again, for me personally, between the dewiness, the coverage issues, and the price, it's just not a product that I could see myself going back out and getting again. I do think though, if you have dry, mature skin, or you like a luminous look that's not going to have sparkle, then you might still wanna check this foundation out. So that ends my review on the Revlon Age Defying Firming and Lifting Makeup. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions that I didn't answer about this foundation, or requests for future videos. As always, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe if you haven't, and I will talk to you all soon. Take care, bye-bye.